Yo, Elliot, how has your circle of friends evolved over the years? The reason why I ask is because my so-called longtime friends have drifted apart and rarely call each other anymore. As I grow older, I'm starting to see more and more that friends are just users and these relationships are just friendships of convenience. Maybe I'm growing too cynical. What are your thoughts on the subject? So the very first thing I would have you know is that I have no friends. In fact, I've never had any friends. And I don't think you've ever had any friends either. I think our whole paradigm as it's associated with masculine friendship is all wrong. And for the most part, we look at our masculine friendships through a feminine frame. The whole needing to call one another and catch up and, you know, have feeling love between one another is, uh, is not really what we're built for. Men are built for doing shit together. And so the only men that I would have called friends, but really they're not, and I'm gonna tell you more about what I mean in a moment, were guys that I was doing something with. So I remember playing high school and college football, and during those times when we were training together, when we had a cohesive mission, when we were sweating, bleeding, and busting each other up, I would have died for those guys. In fact, I put my life on the line many times by jamming my head into a 300 pound lineman or something like that. All so that the guy behind me could score a touchdown or make a sack. I was willing to put my life on the line because there was a mission. I didn't have romantic feelings. I didn't need to call and catch up. I didn't need to, uh, you know, have that buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy, come and give me a hug type love with these guys. This was a sacrificial love. And that's the kind of love that men display and receive from one another. It's what we do with women, but we're talking specifically about men. And so when it comes to your relationship with men, what are you actually doing together? And it's the thing that you're actually doing together that will determine the strength of the bonds that you have together. Most guys, they're just drinking buddies. And if somebody stops drinking, usually he's not a buddy anymore. Or we have the same taste in football teams. And as long as our team is winning, we're doing great together. When the season's over, what do I want to do with you besides maybe drink some beer and talk about the upcoming season? What do guys that get together that don't have a mission to focus on actually do? They behave like women. They chit chat. If you notice you and your old friends, you're probably gossip, probably gossip about the guy that wasn't there. Right now, your friends aren't around and you're gossiping to me about them. You're whining and complaining, uh, talking about pop culture bullshit, you know, uh, what you found on TikTok, dumb stuff. I have, I have no interest in casual relationships and I don't think men are built for it. If you wanna have men that are unified and willing to die for one another, you have to have a mission. You have to have something big. You gotta have something that's worth sacrificing yourself for because that's how a man shows his love. I'm willing to go to bat for you. Even when we were so stupid playing football but afterwards we go to the bar and stuff because we were knuckleheads. If one of my boys got into a fight, I would jump right in and start slamming bodies. It didn't matter. That's how crazy we were. But it was because we were together trying to fight and win for a particular mission. Men are mission makers, mission builders, and fight for missions. Napoleon said that men will die for ribbons, but men are not actually dying for ribbons. They're dying for the men that's beside them. And they're happy to have a ribbon to show my loyalty to these, uh, these, these other guys. So I want to, you know, I kind of went off track here, but I want to talk about the two types of love here. Right. So I know this might sound cynical. You said it, you maybe you're getting cynical. No, you're not getting cynical. You're getting realistic. You're waking up. You're becoming a big boy now. And you're realizing that there's no friendship without mission between men. And that's why you really never actually had any real friendships. Like if the world started falling apart and there was an apocalypse or something like that, you'd make some friends real quick. You know, that's why you want to be around people that, you know, might uh, be dangerous that got your back. I'm happy to live where I live because I got a bunch of dudes that carry guns around here in Florida. Those guys are acquaintances, but if shit hits the fan, they become friends because we're on a mission to survive together, right? And even that has its limits. But we're called to something great. We're called to a particular type of friendship, 
a particular type of love. So I talked about sacrificial love, but then there's there's an even greater sacrificial love that we're called to. So if I'm starting to sound cynical, bear with me for a moment. It's not about dismissing people altogether. It's about being realistic, but we're called to agape love. What is agape love? So there's, there's different types of love, right? And, and, and love and friendship kind of go together, but filial love is friendship itself. And I think of that more as casual acquaintances, just being nice, being nice, getting along, doing the right thing, but there's no emotions. In fact, the only kind of emotion, only type of relationship where there is somewhat of emotion is Eros love, love for your wife, love for your girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Even that, you know, emotional love is less about a conceptual feeling love that you're hoping to have with your friends or you think you have with your wife. And it's more of a, it's more of a physical feeling love. Men's, men's love is physical. That's why we're physically willing to fight and sacrifice, but we also pour ourselves out physically into that which we have Eros love. So we have filial love, we have Eros love. There's another kind of love I forgot, but now we're talking about agape love. And agape love is super important because agape love is, is objective love. It's loving the other for the sake of the other in light of God's request. God calls us to love each other objectively, meaning treat each other like a child of God. This other man is a child of God, so I'm going to give to him for the sake of God. I don't feel anything about him. I'm not uh, interested in being his best friend. I don't have uh, I, I don't have any kind of ties. Storage love. Storage love is the love for the family. I had to go look it up. You saw me tapping. I had to go look it up. But agape love is a perfect love because it's totally objective. Meaning that there's no sub you're not subject to that person. That person's not subject to you based on something deeper. It's flat. It's, hey, you're a child of God. The Lord calls me to do the right thing. I got to take care of you in this situation. You see a guy who's about to jump off of a building. You might risk yourself to go and like pull him back off the bridge or whatever it is that he's about to jump off. Of. Not because you know him or because you love him, but because of agape. It's like, yo, that's a child of God. Let me do, what, let me do the right thing for him. But just to come full circle, man, get over this idea of having some sort of get on the phone, chit chat, buddy, buddy, huggy, huggy friendship with your brothers. You'll never have that unless y'all are doing something serious together. And the more th the more threatening the thing that you're doing together, the tighter the bonds. That's why guys who go to war together, they'll never forget their brothers they'll, to the day they die. They will still probably die for those guys. But it wears off. There's a time frame on it too. That's why I say it's mission specific. When the mission's over, a lot of that, that so-called friendship goes away. You said that you know you guys are. It's it's more of a utilitarian love, and you're using each other. But that's the way it is. You use each other. Men are utility creatures, right? What good are you for this moment? We could be friends as, uh, while the mission is on because I can use your help and you can use my help and we're of value to one another. But once the mission's over, what, 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 why, what? What, what, what? what kind of love, what kind of relationship, what kind of, what, what is there? There's nothing left. And look, I don't wanna go too, go much too much further here because it's already eight minutes, but this is where we get screwed up in all of our relationships, man. We think that we're supposed to be in love with our girlfriends the same way that our mommies loved us and that they should love us the same way. It's all wrapped up in female love. And then we try to, we try to uh, reflect that or, or project that on our male friendships. This is what happens when you live in a fatherless world. And I'm not saying just deadbeat dads or men who didn't know their dads. We don't know how to receive and give masculine love. It's totally objective and mission specific. So you gotta find a mission, my man. Bring men on your mission. Make sure you're focused on the ultimate end. Sacrifice with one another, and those will be your friends. Hope that helps, dude. Porn. 68% of church going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol or drug use. Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur, caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off, realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. 
Is this the man God called you to be? To live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take back your life, and here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.